welcome to Learn Your Color Computer. So let's begin. I'd like to say a few words about the biggest problem in the computer community today, and that's the closet computers. They're the ones that end up in your closet, alone and neglected, after a few fun hours with playing some games. This usually takes place a few months after Christmas, when somebody buys a color computer for the kids to play with. Then, when the fun wears off, into the closet it goes, to sit and gather dust, never to realize its full potential. Some folks may have just had a breakdown on them and decided not to get it fixed, even for a blown fuse. Well, this has gone on for too long now. With the millions of computers in people's homes today, only a few thousand of them have taken the time to learn their computer and take advantage of the remarkable power available in the small white case. Some people have even used their computers to run their own businesses. But this is not enough. If everybody who owned a closet computer was to become a serious color computer user, we'd be a more powerful group than any other. And this is what the series of shows is all about. So let's begin. Hi, welcome to the seventh installment of Learn Your Color Computer. In this installment, we'll teach you all about the commands of um, val, in key string, stop, cont, mem, sign, absolute, str string, relational versions of the and and or commands, plus how to translate exponential notation. First, the val command. The val command is used to convert a string consisting of one or more numbers into its numeric equivalent. The string to be converted is contained in a set of parentheses following the command name. As an example of how this would work, type in this short program. First we clear out memory with new, and then we start with line 10, where we get input using a prompt of enter a string of numbers, and we'll assign it to variable a string. In line 20, we're going to print a string contains a string. So we can see that what we typed in is equivalent to what the variable should be. Then in line 30, We'll do the actual conversion with a equals val, open parentheses, a string, close parentheses. OK, now we're going to report it, starting with line 40, print, quote, a string has been converted to, quote, line 50, print, numeric, variable, A, which, and line 60, print, has a value of Then line 
70, we'll terminate our program with an end command. Now, run the program and use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as the input. Notice both the number and the string look the same. But now, due to using the vowel command, you can now do mathematical functions of the string by passing its numeric counterpart over to a, you know, over from a string. To convert the number back into a string, you must use the str string command, which we'll talk about later in the show. Now let's talk about the in key string command. It's used to get a character which is assigned to a key from the keyboard. If no key is pressed, it will return what we call a nulled string, which contains exactly no characters. A nulled string is recognized by its one and only feature, a pair of quotes with absolutely nothing in between. To show you how this is used, type in this short program. First, clear out memory with new. And now start with line number 10. Clear screen. Print, quote, press a key, quote. And we go to line 20, where we start our input. A string equals in key string. At that point, it'll look at the keyboard to find if a key's being pressed. And it comes down to line 30, where it checks to see if a string equals nulled string then go to 20. So if no key's being pressed, goes back to line 20 and continues the loop. Otherwise, it goes to line 40, where we print, quote, you pressed the semicolon a string semicolon quote key quote then we finish up with line 50 where we go to 20 so that after getting a key from the keyboard and reporting it It'll go back into the loop. Now, run the program and press a key as instructed. And as you can see, the computer responds with results each time we press a key. Instead of having to press the enter key each time at the end of each line, like we have to do with the input command. Now, break press the break key to escape the loop and exit the program. Now let's, let's take a look at the stop command. The stop command is used when you want the program to unconditionally stop. It has the same result as the end command, except the stop command also issues a break sequence to basic, thus making it equivalent to pressing the break key. To see how this works, type in this short program. Clear out memory with new. Now we start with line 10, where we print, quote, this is the first line, quote. Then we go right to line 20, where we print, 
quote, this is the second line, quote. Then we put in our stop command because we want the program to stop there. Now run the program and you should have a result on your screen similar to the one I've got here. As you can plainly see, the stop command issued a break sequence to BASIC, thus forcing the program to stop. After stopping the program by a stop command or by actually pressing the break key, you can restart the program starting with the next line after the stop command was issued or break key was pressed. Add these two lines to your program. Line 40, print, quote, program is continuing here. Quote, line 50, end. Now run the program again, and when the program stops, enter the cont command. And see what we get. As you can see, the program picks up again from the next available line, after which point it broke out. The mem command is an indispensable command which allows you to check the amount of free memory available minus the memory used by read up memory, the default cleared memory we spoke of once before, input out memory, video memory, plus graphics memory. To find out how much memory you currently have free, you can use the command like this. Print mem. Notice how small the number is compared to the total memory capacity, which in most cases can be anywhere between 4 and 128,000 characters. Now let's take a look at the sign command. The sign command is followed by one piece of data enclosed in parentheses and it's used to find whether the number you're testing is a negative number, a positive number, or zero. To better understand how this works, type in this little program. First clear out memory with new. Now we'll start at line number 10 where we get our input using a, oops, back up a little. Sorry there, folks. Uh, okay, we'll use our prompt of type a number, quote, and we'll assign it to the variable a. Then, in line 20, we do an if sign open parentheses, a, close parentheses, equal one, then print, quote, it's a positive number, quote. And on line 30, we'll check and see if sign, open parentheses, a, close parentheses, equal zero, then print, quote, it's a zero. Close quotes. 
and a 940. We'll check to see if sine, open parentheses, A, close parentheses, equal negative 1, then print, quote, it's a negative number, close quote. Then we'll termin our, terminate our program in line 50 with an end command. Now run the program using the number, let's see, 5. And you'll see that uh, we used it when we use uh, Okay, if we use a zero, it's a zero. Then we use a negative seven. It's a negative number. You'll see that uh, that the sign command in lines twenty, thirty, and forty. Report if the number is positive, negative, or zero. If a number of, is positive, the sign command will return a one. If it's a negative number, it will return a negative one. And a zero will cause it to return a zero. The absolute command will do a similar function, except the result is achieved without regard to the number or the variable's sign. Now we'll take a look at the str string command that I told you about earlier. The str string command is used to convert a number or numeric variable into a string or string variable. The str string command is used with the number or numeric variable enclosed in parentheses following the command name. To better understand how this works, type in this little program. First, clear out memory with new. And then we'll go right to line 10, in which we input, enter a number. And we'll assign that to A. Then line 20, we'll do the actual conversion with B string equals str string A. That'll take the number we've assigned to A and convert it to a string in that same number. Then with line 30, we print B string quote is now equal to semicolon A to show that they are equal to one another. And now in line 40, we'll terminate our, terminate our program with, uh, with an end. Okay, now run the program and enter a number. It is now obvious that the string variable of B string is indeed now equivalent to the numeric variable of A. Now let's check out the AND command. There are two different versions of the AND command. One detects variable relationships, and the other is used for binary math. For now, we'll just discuss the one that detects variable relationships. The AND command is used to detect if two or more conditions have been met before allowing the program 
to execute a special set of instructions. To better understand how this works, let's type in this little program here. First, clear out memory with new. Then we'll start with line number 10, where we'll input type a number, and we'll assign that the a variable. Then we'll go down to line number 20, where we'll input type another number, quote, and we'll assign that to B. Then in line 30, we test to see if, open parentheses, A equal 1 and B equal 1. If it is, then print they are both ones, quote, colon, else, print, quote, not the same. Now we go to line 40, where we terminate the program with an end command. Now run the program, and you should get something like this, a prompt that says type a number. This time we'll put a 1, and then when it says type another number, we'll put 1. The change in the data we entered wasn't there this time. We entered a one for each variable. Now, if you run the program again using slightly different data, the result will change and you'll get something like this. Uh, we'll use a one on the first one and a zero on the second one. The change in data caused one of the two conditions to, to be what we call a false result. At that point, the else command took over, issuing the alternate print result string. The and command can also be used with strings or with a combination of numeric data and strings. The OR command, of which there is also two versions, works in a similar manner to the AND command. The difference is that the OR command looks to see if any of the conditions are true and then executes the proper commands that are issued. Finally, we'll take a look at what goes on with exponential notation. Sometimes, when a number gets too small or too large for the computer to handle, the number will adapt to the situation by printing numbers in exponential notation. The number 1 billion, for example, can be written something like this. 1 e plus 0, 09 meaning a one followed by nine zeros. If an answer would come out something like 5e minus 0, 06, that means we must move the decimal point, which comes after the five, six place to the left, inserting zeros as necessary, meaning point zero 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 five or five millionths. This would be a number resulting from such an equation as print 
5 divided by 10 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 divided by 10. Be warned that the computer can't handle numbers larger than that of 1e plus 38 or less than 1e minus 38. This concludes this installment of Learn Your Color Computer. In our next installment, we'll teach you about the commands of ASCII, character string, motor, audio, point, and poke. See you then. Thank you for watching. We hope that you've enjoyed the show and that every person that watched will benefit from the information we've supplied. Remember that using your computer is a process best learned by repetition, so spend a little time with the computer and get to know the information we've given. Remember, if you have a problem with any of the information we've supplied, give us a call. One of our many experienced members of our club will be more than glad to help you with your information. If you missed a show, let us know. We can have a tape of the show you missed ready for you to view at the next meeting. That's about all the time we have for now. So tune in again next time when we continue to learn your color computer.